Okay, Manta, I guess we start over here. Evaluate what you thought you did out there and how well you were able to perform. I felt good. You know, I'm at home now. Um, I'm in a place where I'm comfortable. I'm surrounded by people that I know. Um, and I thought I did pretty good. I was very pleased with the way I performed and I was very pleased with how we all perform you know, as a whole. I think we all out there represented uh, Notre Dame the way it should. Essentially a job interview, for lack of a better term. How did, <laughs> how did you approach it that way? I think I, I kind of didn't think of it that way. You know, I think when you start thinking of it, you know, it adds pressure, you know, pressure that you don't need at this time. So I just thought of it as an opportunity for me to go out there, run, um, show what I got, and show what I can do, and you know, that's exactly what I did. Manti over here, um, do you know what your times were in the 40? Uh, I heard, you know, four sevens, um, low four sevens. I heard my fastest time at somebody clock was a four six nine. So um, I don't really know for sure what was printed, um, but that's what um, they showed me. And how do you feel about that? I mean, is that what you expected? Uh, you know, I, I I I just expected me to run fast. You know, run faster than I ran at the combine, and uh, that's exactly what I did. And did you? train any differently in the interim between the combine and now? Yeah, I think, you know, I was pleased with the way I, I performed in the 5-10-5 and the L cone at the combine, so I didn't have to, you know, work on that, you know, during my training. So uh, a lot of that time that I usually would dedicate to those two drills, I just put in overtime on a 40. Man, can you talk a little bit about, oh, right here, um, do you have any um, planned visits with NFL teams? And if so, what teams are you meeting with? Uh, I, I know I have. I'm not really sure who I have. Um, that's something I have to talk with my agent about. Um, but you know, I know I have a, a couple visits I got to go on. Have you met with any? Have you had any interviews yet with any of them? Uh, I, had a, I had a lot at uh, the Combine. I met with 20 teams. Can you tell us what they're, what they're asking you about and how much of that goes back to, you know, what happened in January? I mean, everybody wants to know. Uh, everybody wants a brief. You know, some guys just wanted a brief minute uh, what happened. Um, you know, some guys, you know, went in, into a little bit more depth. Um, but overall, it was a great opportunity, great experience. Uh, it went better than I expected. Um, so, you know, it was good. Is there one area they focus on with, when they ask about that? Just or, or what do you what do you want to what do you try to tell them when they ask you about it? What, what's your main objective in talking about it? Well, just let's focus on football. You know, I think that's it. That was my message. You know, um, you know I'm a football player. Um, I made mistakes, but nothing that affected my play on the football field. Manta, I, you know, the pro day is like a second chance opportunity. You can improve on stuff that you didn't do well at the combine. Do you feel like you did that today? Yeah, I definitely did. You know, I felt, I felt good. Uh, and it was, it was kind of like, it was just a grand finale kind of thing, you know, with everybody there. And I had, I had guys around me that, you know, I spent the last four years with, um, that I was comfortable with. And, you know, it was, it was, it was, it was more comfortable being out here and, and, and you know, performing here at Notre Dame, and so I was very pleased with that, what happened. It's not really a sit back and wait time. I mean, obviously, you'll have your individual workouts with teams still coming. And I Eifert, come on. <laughs> Sorry. Tyler, I for everybody. <laughs> you'll have your individual and uh, interviews and things of that nature, but how pleased are you now just to be to the point where you can kind of sit back and wait until late <laughs> April for the draft? I think you know, if you ask anybody um, who's, go who's going through this process, this is the possibly the best day um, ever. Uh, you, it's a big, big burden off your shoulders, and you know, you, it just feels like it was your birthday. And so, uh, you know, it's, I'm I'm very glad that it's over. Obviously, yeah, like you said, it's not a waiting game. You, you got to perform. You know, this is when you got to kick it into overdrive. And so, no, but we're definitely, um, you know, pleased and, and very happy that this is this process is done. How much of a dream come true will it just be when your name is called, though? Oh, it's definitely a dream come true. I think, you know, if you, when, you, when you start playing football and at the age where you decide, man, I, I really want to do this you know, for a living, um, that's the draft day is a, the day that you, you, you dream of. And uh, obviously when that, when that happens, you know, I'm going to be very happy uh, that I got to spend it with my family and uh, that we finally made it. And that's just the first step to a very, very long journey. 
uh, for both of you. How frustrating is it that four years of football kind of gets pushed back into the background and so much emphasis is placed on you running around in shorts out here and not <laughs> Saturday afternoons? Um, I mean, it, it seems that way and it gets hyped up that way with, um, you know, things on TV and the combine. But at the end of the day, you know, it is your film that they that really matters. Um, you know, so people that have been doing this for a while remind us of that, you know, it kind of takes some of the pressure off that, you know, that it's not make or break if you don't do well at the combine or at the pro day. You've already, you know, you've shown what you can do on tape and that's what that's what really matters. Ditto. Yeah, you. same thing. You know, it's, 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 it's what you do on tape. Um, you know, we play football with a helmet on, with shoulder pads. Um, and, you know, obviously, you know, all these tests, um, it's something you want to do well at. Um, it's not something that, you know, you just want to say, oh, you know, watch my tape. You know, it's whenever you're competing out there, uh, you, want to, you want to do well at. And, uh, you know, when you do, it's, you know, a big accomplishment. And if you don't, it motivates you um, to, you know, just improve. And so, um, although these, these you know, drills that we do, these, you know, tests that we do, it's, it's frustrating. Uh, it, it's a great learning opportunity and a great way for us to just go out there and compete. All right, lastly for Tyler, everybody uh, that does a mock draft or, or analyzes a draft says you're locked to be a first-round pick. Why would you participate in something like this today? Um, you know, I have, like, my agent and people that are giving me advice, like uh, like Tim McDonald here and other other people that, you know, that's just that was what I was advised to do, um, you know, run routes. Um, you know, I, didn't, I never even thought that I – wouldn't run routes. I mean, that's just something I, I work on. That's what I do a lot. So I had no problem going out there and uh, run around a little bit. Tyler, it was nice coming to knowing that you didn't have to worry about you know forty times or, or anything like that. Yeah, it was it was a relief. I mean, at the combine, um, I don't know I don't know how how I looked on the outside, but I mean I was I was nervous. You know, it's a stressful period, and uh, you know you got you got a lot on the line there. So. Um, you know, I was, I was happy to have that over. I could just focus on more football-specific drills, getting ready for pro day, um, which is what I've grown up doing instead of those, you know, all the sprinter, you know, getting ready for a track meet. Hey, Manti, over here, over here. Um, are you hearing anything about where you might be selected? No. Um, I'm not hearing. I don't think any of us know where we're going. Um, we just hope that we're going somewhere. Um, but yeah, definitely no. I don't know. I haven't heard of where I'm going. And you said that when you um, were at the combine and you met with teams, you said it. You just said it here that you felt like it went better than expected. Yeah. Talking about the stuff. What were you expecting? Oh uh, well, you know, whenever you go, you know, into those kind of environments, um, you know, you hear the horror stories. You know, from guys who came from. You know, you hear about how guys left the room and just like, man, that was. That was a grilling session, and so you know, as a as a young young guy, uh, you go in there expecting the worst, um, you know. And so for me, I was nervous, you know. I was like, oh my gosh, like these guys are gonna get after me. Um, but the guys, you know, they they were, you know, it was nice. It was professional, um, and you know, they they listened to what I had to say, and uh, it was done. And so you know, it was something that I was very, you know, happy. Uh, I'm very happy the way it, it turned out. Do you feel like that whole thing is? Miles in the rearview mirror. Oh, for me it is. Um, I think for me, I'm just glad that I'm out here playing football. I'm back home. Um, I'm with my guys I'm around this building, and so you know that stuff you know, is is long gone. Manti, general, how closely do you follow what NFL teams are doing in the off season in terms of free agency or or cutting players? And specifically, did you have a reaction when the Bears parted ways with Brian Urlacher? Uh, you know, I saw that on a ticker when I was playing Madden in 2013. Um, and I was just like, that's crazy. Um, but, you know, I, I don't really pay attention to that stuff. Uh, I just let teams do what they do, and I do what I can do. Um, um, but, yeah, definitely, you know, I wasn't, I, I wasn't too sure how to, ha to, you know, respond to what happened. And I was just like, oh, wow. Yeah, that. That's that's very sad. And in, in all your dealings with uh, with the teams and feedback from your agent, how comfortable are you that the intangibles that were always considered a strength of yours will be you know 
considered a strength when teams evaluate whether or not to draft you in April? Uh, yeah, I'm very, very confident. Um, and I'm not sure how teams are going to evaluate me, but uh, like how I was saying, um, it's, it's about your film. Uh, you know, they, they see, they've seen what I could do on the football field. Um, and uh, you know, obviously, you know, that's where I'm comfortable uh, with, you know, just find ball, hit ball, and make plays. Uh, so that's, that's what I'm going to improve on. And I'm glad that this, this is over um, and that, you know, all of us can focus on, you know, just preparing to play football now. Manti and Ta uh, Tyler, you guys are both considered uh, first-round draft picks, so it's pretty high regard. Uh, that analysts hold you at. Uh, what aspects of your game do you guys feel like you work to improve upon every day going through this process? Uh, for me, it's pretty much what everyone else says, just my strength, my blocking. Um, obviously, I, I work to improve on everything. Catching the ball, I, I've dropped passes before. So, you know, always working on my hands. Uh, you know, I work on everything, but the, but the one thing is um, my blocking, just getting bigger and stronger, putting on a little weight and uh, get better at that. Yeah, I think uh, for me, uh, obviously, you know, you can, you can always get better. Um, but the one uh, area that I like to improve on is um, getting off of blocks and you know, using my hands. Um, and once I, you know, improve on that aspect of my game, um, I think you know, there will be more production out of my play. Um, but definitely uh, using my hands and, and getting off of blocks. Do either of you have plans to go to New York to be there in front of the cameras? Uh, no, I'll be at home. Same. Over to your left, um, you know, everyone pays attention to the 40 times and stuff. But what about the specifically the, the positional drills for both of you? I mean, how did you feel you performed in those? Uh, Tyler first. I felt felt good in those. Felt comfortable. Um, you know, that's that's the thing. That those are the things that I feel most comfortable doing. You know, on the field, things I've been doing since I was little, and uh, you know, I thought I thought I did well. Ran ran good routes. Caught the football. And, uh, you know, showed explosion getting up the field. And were the depths different than what you were running here typically, or were they a little different? Or um, Yeah, I mean, they're, they're a little different, but they're all, um, I mean, they're things that I've been working on that we've been kind of prepped on the NFL routes, how they're different, maybe different depths, how they're ran. So uh, those are things that I've been, I've had plenty of time to be working on. And Manti, I look like maybe a couple Passes slipped through your hands at one point. Were you a little frustrated that uh, you didn't finish a couple of those interceptions? Or uh, no, you know, I wasn't frustrated. It's was, it's just something that happens, you know. Um, I dropped. Uh, anybody nominated? I dropped. I think I dropped one, maybe two. Um, but you know, you always want to catch it. You know, you always want to catch it. But you know, things happen. You got to move on. And out there, I was just having fun. Um, you know, I was just having fun. That's like I said before. That's my domain. Um, that's where I'm most comfortable. Um, running sideline to sideline, changing direction. Um, that's where I feel uh, at home. And so uh, and I definitely was having fun out there. Obviously, you know, it would have been nice to catch those balls, but um, yeah, it was fine to me. Tyler, have you talked to any of the other tight ends about this process, like Rudolph or anybody? And what, have, what kind of advice have they given to you about your position? Yeah, I've t um, I talked to Rudolph and uh, you know, we don't we don't talk a lot about football specific. We talk more about, you know, the transition to the NFL, what that's like. Um, you know, you gotta you don't have a locker room full of college guys. You know, he says that he's lucky in Minnesota it's a young locker room. Uh, but some places, you know, you get you get some older guys with wives and kids that are going home to their families and you're going home to your apartment by yourself. That's just something that you gotta um, kinda be ready for. Um, you know, just kind of the transition process, not as, not as much football related. And, and what are your thoughts just on the tight end position now? It's, it's become, you know, a premium now around the league. I'm sure you've kind of looked, at, looked into that. Yeah, I mean, I'm thankful for the guys that have played before me, you know, the, the Gronkowski's, Jimmy Graham, Kyle Rudolphs, to kind of set that stage uh, because it's, I mean, it's, it's a good time to be a tight end, the kind of tight end that I am. And, you know, so I'm just – just feel lucky to be coming in when I am. Tyler, over here. Um, there's some people who have kind of created a mini rivalry between you and Stanford, Zach, um, Zach Ertz, to see who's going to be drafted first. Does that mean anything to you, or is it something that, you know, hey, I want to be the first tight end drafted, or as long as you're in the first round, you don't mind, or have you, you know, what's, what are your feelings on that? 
No, I want to be the first tight end taken. <laughs> I mean, um, I think it's kind of kind of silly that this become a rivalry. I saw him at the combine. You know, he was a cool dude. You know, we hung out the whole time, and uh, you know, it's. You know, I think I've. I'm, I'm doing everything I can to be the first tight end taken, and uh, that's what I hope to be. Tyler? I'm just curious what kind of feedback you got in some of those interviews from last year, basically playing wide receiver, and how much that might have helped your stock coming into this process. Yeah, I mean, I think teams like my, my versatility this year. I mean, I explained to them that I knew, I knew our entire offense. You could put me in any position on the field, and I'd know what to do. So that gives some offenses a little bit of flexibility to move me around and uh, create some mismatches or you know, just things that a defensive coordinator has to be worried about. Um, you know, I think I have that ability to, to help whatever team I'm on. Manti, just briefly, one, one of the criticisms we've heard recently is just because of your 40 time that you would be a two down linebacker. How much do they talk to you about your film when you would have the most interceptions for a linebacker in the mm -hmm. last decade in college football versus that 40 time when you have an actual back and forth with NFL GMs on it? Um, you know, that, that hasn't really, as far as the teams, that, that conversation has never come up. Um, you know, they, they asked me about, the only question they asked me about concerning that is how did I go from no interception to zero? Um, and other than that, you know, they, they really talked to me about my 40 time and how it correlates with me being a two down linebacker. You know, I've been a three down linebacker my whole life. And uh, that's something that you know, I, I'm going to work and continue to do so that, you know, that, that remains the same. How'd you go from no interceptions to seven? Uh, first, I, you know, I lost, I lost, I lost weight. You know, I got in the best shape of my life, so that when my mind said move, my body did. Um, and secondly, uh, you know, I, underst I understood where I had to be. I understood um, past concepts. I understood uh, through my film study, you know, where guys like to go. Um, and third, you know, obviously, some of them were from pressure, um, tip passes. Um, so, you know, credit to guys around me um, for you know helping me get in the. The, getting those some of those interceptions. Tyler, over here. How did you decide on uh, Evan Sharpley to be the guy to throw passes to you, and did you consider anybody else? Uh, yeah, uh, good John Goodman. Um, he got hooked up with him to 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 throw for him, and uh, my agent was looking around for a quarterback to throw to me. Um, I think you know Brady Quinn's name was in the equation, and uh, some other guys, but. You know, me and me and Sharp, we we were on scout team freshman year, so we had a little <laughs> we had a little connection from that. And uh, once I found out that he was throwing, you know, he throws a good ball, and um, I like catching passes from him. Manti, it it sounded like um, John Gruden hooked you up with Derek Brooks mm -hmm. um, through your appearance on ESPN. Can you talk about that connection with Derek? What you learned from him, and are you still in touch with him? Yeah, you know, whenever you see you know a guy like. You know, Derek Brooks walk into the building, you know, somebody that you watched on growing up, somebody who's done what you're trying to do. Um, it was definitely a great blessing uh, to have him there. Uh, and he just told me, uh, you know, just, just be myself, uh, be humble, and to go out there and make plays. Um, I think that's the most important thing that he, he told me. You know, at the end of the day, it's football. Um, and you go out there and you work your butt off. Um, and you make sure that you leave no doubt um, as far as your work ethic. And I think yeah, I got the most confidence and, um, from that because I know that what drives, what has brought me to this point is my work ethic. And that's what's going to continue to happen. Um, and so definitely, you know, having him there uh, and having Coach Gruden there as well uh, was definitely a, a great experience for me. What did you learn from Coach Gruden in that experience? I just, he taught me so many, so many things. Um, he taught me just about character. He taught me about just film study, um, and you know he he's just such a great coach um, that he focuses on the little things. And you know, for me to sit there with him and to learn from him, to see you know what he looks at, um, to just talk about football, you know, I definitely learned a lot. And what do you do now as far as where your home base is? Are you going to stay on campus? Are you going to go back to Florida? Are you going to go to Hawaii? No, yeah, I'm gonna stay here. I'm gonna stay here, work out here. Um, and, uh, yeah, that's the plan so far. I was going to ask the same question. Tyler, where are you going uh, from here? I'll be, I'll be here. Just working out.
And Manti, just back home with why, how supportive has everyone been around you over the last couple of months with everything you've been through? Uh, it's, it's been amazing. Um, you know, the two places I call home has been nothing but support. Um, you know, here in South Bend, the Notre Dame community, um, and back at home. And, you know, they, they've just been, you know, home. You know, guys have, have reached out to me and my family. Um, just been so supportive. And for me, I was just very blessed. See this guy next to me, you know, I'm internally indebted to this guy because um, now was, that was possibly the hardest time in my life I'm going through that. And uh, I was lucky that I had one of my best friends with me. Um, this guy checked up on me every every day, um, came over when, you know, I said, no, nah, I, don't, I don't want nobody to talk to. He knocked the door down and said, hey, man, you know, let's play some video games or something. So uh, to have, you know, Eif there, man, it was, a blessing in disguise for me, and you know, just all the other guys down there, Eric Reed, um, just a whole bunch of good guys. And so, you know, I'm I'm very grateful for um, the guys that I had at Florida, all the family I have here in Notre Dame, and obviously um, all my family members and my friends, and just the whole state of Hawaii for all their their love and support. Oh!